Okay, all of you out there in YouTube land, or you DIY philosophers, welcome to my second vlog on Newcomb's Paradox. And I started off calling it Newcomb's Problem, but I believe I earned the right to call it Newcomb's Paradox. Paradox. If you don't know what I'm talking about in that, go down to the link just under the first link, and that's to part one. And this has turned into a kind of a sequel. The sequel is, would I two box or one box? Which is kind of an embarrassment for me um, to be asked that question. Yes, that's the whole point of, of, of the Newcomb's game. So let's see how I can make good on this potential embarrassment, which I believe I will do. A bit of housekeeping. I'm not really going to use the visual component of this vlog, maybe other than to demonstrate Newcomb's uh, problem and what I believe is Newcomb's paradox by demonstrating Newcomb's game. So I believe the, the paradox arises out of a Newcomb's game. And I'll be making reference to my previous arguments about this. Uh, so if you want to toddle off and do the dishes, you can negate the difference between domesticity and philosophy. And I believe that that negation of the difference is a moving forward in, in, in a real sense progress. There you go, a bit of Hegel for you in there. Although I don't think he was into that exact contradiction moving us forward or negation of the difference but anyway okay so I'll quickly go through Newcomb's paradox paradox or problem or uh, actually what I'll quickly go through is a Newcomb's game and then I'll go on to the ramifications of it uh, <clears throat> I, I've gone through this already in the first uh, vlog but I'll, I'll quickly go through it again as I say watch the first vlog if you maybe um, are wondering what I'm talking about and, and, and don't really know because it's expostulated in more detail there. Or watch any of the vloggers on Newcomb's, uh, on, on Newcomb's problem slash paradox and, and they'll, they, they will demonstrate quite ably, I think, in, in most of their vlogs anyway. Okay, so there's two boxes. You've got box A, box B. Box A is transparent. The hole here simulates transparency. Box B is opaque. There's $1,000 in box A. You can reach out and take it at any time. And drawing the game, and there's uh, no, there's either nothing in box B or there's one million dollars. Predicted character says that if you try to be greedy and take both boxes, uh, she, she'll know and not put a thousand, uh, put, not put the million dollars in box B. So box B will be empty. So a zero or a million, zero. In that case, she says uh, she had a lot of success in the past, so there's good reason to trust her. Uh, she might be one of these psychologically savvy types that you find you know, around fortune telling and so on. Um, or you, or, or, or if you, if you go for both, uh, if you just go for one and you're not greedy, exercise some self restraint, I guess, uh, then she will put the million dollars in there. So, do you trust the predictor one box or not trust the predictor two box? Yeah, I should trust the predictor because she's got this success in the past oh no but I'm just leaving a thousand dollars on the table here and I'm always a thousand dollars better off to boxing and I think that's a gives rise to a genuine paradox where they're both right we're both one boxing and two boxing is right now the reason this causes a bit of an embarrassment for me is because then uh, people can ask me and have asked me yeah but mate if you went into the tent what would you do one or two box right and if I say I'd one box, then I don't really believe that it's a, a paradox where both one and two boxing are right. I believe that one boxing is right. And if I if I say two boxing, then again, I don't believe that one and two boxing are both right. I believe that two boxing is right. Either way, I am have to admit I'm wrong when I've said it's a contradiction. So what am I going to do about this? Now, there's a couple of ways which you might think I can get out of this, but I, but actually there's, 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 there's two ways which seem maybe an attractive way to get out of this and still holds a contradiction. And but, but I'm going to dismiss two of those ways and then I'll talk about a slightly more involved way which does get, get me out of this. Okay, so the first of the two ways is what's called a null strategy. Now, what a null strategy is, is you just refuse to play a game. It's kind of like John Cage sitting in front of the piano and not playing anything for four minutes, 33 seconds, right? So it's a null piano piece. And it just means you, 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 know, you refuse to participate. He refuses to participate in the, in the overdone act of, of piano playing. Well, that's not really what he was on about, but that, 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 that's the motivation there that you, you, you just don't want him. Okay? Um, 
So that's an old strategy. You, you, you just refuse to play the game. But that seems... That's, and then no one's going to put a gun to your head and force you to play a Newcomb's game, I don't think. It would be kind of weird if they did, right? But the question is whether or not a null strategy is rational. It doesn't really look rational. And here's why not. Well, there are four outcomes in a Newcomb's game, of a, of a Newcomb's game. Two where the predictor is right and two where the predictor is wrong. Now, the two where the predictor is right is that the predictor is right and you one box and you get a million dollars. Pretty good. Or the, the other one where the predictor is right is you two box us and you get only a thousand dollars. Not bad. A thousand dollars. Pay the rent for a week if you're lucky. If you live in a low rental accommodation like I do. Not even then. But a thousand dollars. Okay, better than a slap in the face with a wet fish. Okay. There's two outcomes to give a total of four where the predictor is wrong. Uh, now, if you one box and the predictor is wrong, you get nothing. Okay, so let's flag that one. It's sort of interesting. If you want, if you if you uh, two boxes and the predictor is wrong, you get one million one thousand, the most you can get. So there's only really one of the four outcomes where you get nothing, and there's no reason to believe that outcome is more likely or inevitable, uh, at least for most people. Uh, David Lewis may have believed it was inevitable for him, but that's a different story. So. What, what I think we can we can take away from this is that um, that um, um, that that it's not rational to to just refuse to play. That it's, 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 it's likely you're going to get something out of it. It'd be like going to one of those. I mean, I really hate sports bets and poker machines and shit. But it'd be like going to one of those poker machines where there's a good check. You know, most of the cards line up and you get money. Well, of course you you put in your Whatever they put in, dollar or thousand dollars or whatever. Okay, so uh, the null strategy is not really effective. Now, if both of the options, both one and two boxing, are right, are rational, then another option could be a coin toss. Okay, you just look, I'm not admitting one's better than the other. If I had to play a Newcomb's game, I'd just toss a coin and see what I got. But unfortunately, a coin toss um, reduces the predictor's accuracy to 50%. And on most figurings of a Newcomb's game, that's not enough to actually have a Newcomb's game. And that's uh, part of the reason um, why well, Robert Nozick, when he presented this game to the pub pub public, said no mixed strategies. It's in the, it's in the end notes to that, to that article. I'll put a link to the PDF of that article underneath the other blog. You can just grab the PDF. I don't think there's any intellectual copyright issues, and who cares if there is. Sorry, I didn't say that. But um, yeah, just grab the PDF. And uh, um, in that case, um, uh, you, 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 you can't toss a coin. So the situation here is a bit, bit like a, a medieval, I'll just illustrate this a little bit further. Uh, there's a medieval problem called Buridan's ass, and Buridan's ass uh, is walking along and it sees two bales of lucerne, which are both equally as nutritious but equally distant from it. And it can't decide which one to take, uh, and so it starves to death. But it's known that the way out of Buridan's ass is that the ass tosses a coin. It's kind of a surreal image. It's a great, great image. Love it. But uh, you, you can't really do the same even though both one boxing and two boxing are right. Uh, that, that, that's ruled out by the nature of the game uh, and or by the rules of the game. Or, or and by the rules of the game, I guess you'd say. So you, you can't do that either. So that means you have to choose between one and two boxing. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, if you hold it to paradox and one and two boxing are right, you're in a bit of trouble. Okay, so my solution to this isn't straightforward, and I beg your indulgence and, and to follow me a bit. I'm going to begin a bit with, the, with the, actually the history of these props. So these props weren't made um, for the first vlog, much less the second. These props were made because I did a bunch of community research on what everyday people, not necessarily and, and usually not, uh, academic philosophers, or, or even people who studied philosophy, thought about um, Newcomb's uh, a Newcomb's game and whether they would one or two box in, in response to it. So I played a bunch of Newcomb's game with a whole bunch of different people. We did a, a sort of absurdist DIY punk night about it, and I'll put a link down below to a play we made about Newcomb's a Newcomb's game, which uh, it's only one act of the play. It was all that wound up getting filmed in the end. So. Um, <clears throat> 
you know, go to that to get an idea. Also, I went into clubs and uh, main, main football clubs and pubs with my Newcombs boxes and tried to engage people to play a Newcombs game rather than sports bet. The punk forces, one of the pop, punk forces pet hates sports bet. You know, and, and what are they called? Pokey. The one they used to call them one arm bandits when they when you had to do this. Now they're just what they are finger bandits. Okay, so. Um, and I tried to get people to, to, to play Newcombs games, and I was successful. I, I also actually got in some, some trouble with security because they thought I was kind of pestering people um, at one stage. I was forced to, I was forced to exit a, a club quite rapidly, actually. And I thought that they would they'd call the police, in fact. So I was hiding in a, bo in a bush with my Newcombs boxes, trying to see if the police would come because my bike was chained outside the club. All right. What did I learn from all this palaver and ignominy? Well, a couple of pretty odd things, actually. And if you I've never taught Newcomb's, a, a Newcomb's problem, Newcomb's game, much less a Newcomb's paradox to undergraduate students. So uh, if you have maybe, and, and you have some similar experiences to my findings, uh, yeah, feel free to put them in the comments, it'll be very interesting. Okay, <laughs> now, a couple of strange things happened. I mean, people always justified the choices, which is good. But quite often you've got people saying, I'd box A only. I'd one box, but box A only. And you're kind of like, oh, hang on, that's not in the rules. You're either two box, box A and B, or you one box, box B. You can't box A only. The reason for that is if you're going to go for the thousand, um, then you might as, well, might as well have a chance of the of the million, okay. And so, you know, I'd roll my eyes and i think, I mean, I, th I partly I think what you should think as a, as a, as a philosopher explaining these things, I haven't explained it well enough um, and they don't understand. But anyway, we will flag that. So that's an interesting response we got. Also got the coin, cost res coin, uh, coin toss response, which suggests that that uh, there might be an intuitive feeling here that there's a paradox. Uh, and then I'm like, no, you're not allowed to talk. Ugh, coin toss. What's this with the spoonerism? Sorry. So, no, that was another interesting response. Um, a third interesting response that I got was uh, asking about the context of the game. And again, the eyes roll. Look, no, nah, look, you've got to understand it's game theory. The context doesn't depend. You know, um, oh, it's not dependent on the game theory. Either you want the one thousand one million, or you, you know, you think you can get that, or, or you're just going to trust the predictor and, and, and go for the million in one box, or two box, and try and get the extra thousand. Like that, that's it, right? You, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe this there is some case of going into the uh, why you believe in the predictor, and I'll put a link um, down below to an article about that. But that's about it, right? Like. You know, um, that, 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 that's, that's really about it. Um, there's no further considerations to be had here. Um, but people who were asking, well, am I poor and so on. Now, I think that it's easy to dismiss these kind of responses, but I think there might be more to them. And that more is what I want to use to get out of the problem, or the potential embarrassment I face in that I believe that both one and two boxing are right, but if I went into an, into an actual tent and, and, and a predictor was there with the nucleus boxes, I'd have to either one or two box. So let me explain a bit further what I mean. Let's imagine that I had to have an operation and the operation cost $1,000. If I didn't have the operation, I died. Okay, and I had to get the $1,000 one, $1, jolly quick smart. Well then, obviously, I would two box because I would know that I could get the one thousand that I can see in there, and if I got the extra one million, well, yippee, you know, whatever, you know, hold a big party, buy a house, but I, I'd want at least that one thousand, so I'd two box. And I think that could be the that could be the intuition between this kind of weird response that you get quite often. That I have, I've had on multiple occasions where you one box, but box A. People might also just be being perverse and unpredictable, and there's something to be set for that as well. But um, I think that 
that, 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 that could be the... Inter I mean, you could say, look, they've just got it wrong, I just don't understand it, and you, you could be right about that. But if there is an intuition there um, that explains why they go for this bizarre choice of one boxing and it's box A, well, then I think that might be it. Now, let's say, on the other hand, as is happening, it's bloody scary, that rent prices are just going up and up and up and up. The rent market's going up, shit. They're cutting all the public uh, health, and, and the public health's in a lot of trouble, with COVID and all the rest of it. Uh, and so you think, look, I'm only, take, you think, I'm only 30, but to be able to survive nicely till, you know, at least 80, I'll need at least a million. Well, then you need one box, right? Um, in, 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 that, in that social and personal situation. So what's happening here? I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, what's happening here is that it's not that one boxing or two boxing are right, which is the outcome I want, it's that it's dependent on uses. And this takes me back to vlog one and my arguments there for it being a paradox, a, a, a Newcomb's paradox arising out of Newcomb's game. So, in that vlog, I argued that money is both useful and useless, and it's this which creates a this contradiction, which which you can suppress when you're just enjoying something you've bought, um, appears elsewhere, and and there's a reason to believe that it appears in a Newcomb's game, giving rise to a Newcomb's genuine paradox or dialethia, as I said there, and I talked a little bit about para-consistent logic where you can handle contradictions and, 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 and believe in real life contradictions such as perhaps the moment of change, the exact moment of change. So, <clears throat> um, given this, uh, if we look at the nature of money as being both useful and useless, the, the, the way the contradiction arises in game theory or, or is expressed in game theory is that, is that as money becomes pure, purer in form and just becomes a blips on a computer screen, so you can't even roll it up and, and snort cocaine with it like you used to be able to with dollar bills, that uh, what happens is that uh, you can get these, it becomes more and more possible, it was always possible, but it becomes more and more possible, more and more common to get these, these investment opportunities which are, which, which are, are both right and yet, uh, and yet are, involve different use values. So the uselessness of money is, um, is, 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 is suppressed there and, I'm um, oh, sorry, so, so then we get a, so, so, pardon me, so then we get the paradox, right? Now, the paradox can be diffused by suppressing one of the conjuncts, okay? So money is both useful and useless, okay? So in the case of, um, of, of, of the equal investment opportunities, it's both, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's both useful in that it um, allows you the, the Say, for instance, bet, betting on uh, betting, or just betting, um, investing on in cars and investing on motorcycles, and so uh, it's useful in that sense. And yet, it remains useless in that uh, it, it doesn't discriminate over over uh, whether cars are more useful than, than motorcycles, and in itself doesn't have any utility. <clears throat> it's it's just it's just it's just money's just about being quantitatively. Um, a, a quantitative, um, a, a, an endless quantitative addition, um, as well as about use value. So, it may never be used. I mean, you, you could pass money onto your children, and it's that then there it's never used to for any uses in your life, right? So it gets passed onto your children, and they do the same thing, and they do the same thing. So. So that's where I think the contradiction comes about. Now, what's happening with the um, idea of bringing in context for whether or not you want a thousand or whether you want um, a million, or need, urgently need a thousand or urgently need a million, uh, as in the case of the operation or as in the case of the property market and the decaying health system, uh, two boxing and one boxing respectively, is that you're um, suppressing the usefulness uh, conjunct of, of, of money. Sorry, yeah, you're suppressing the, the uselessness conjunct of money. Sorry, my bad. You're suppressing the idea that money is useless and you're just looking at, at the uses of money. 
Okay, so you're suppressing the conjunct. So money is both useful and useless. You're suppressing the conjunct where it is useless and you're just looking at the uses of money. And then, because you've suppressed that, that, that contradiction, which gives rise um, to the, uh, via the capacity of, say, equal investments to, the, to a contradiction expe expressed in a, a, via a Newcomb's game as a Newcomb's paradox, then, the, 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 then you've got a, then you've got a, you've dissolved that contradiction, you've resolved that contradiction, and you've got a choice, um, which might be um, two boxing in the case of the one thousand dollars needed for the operation, and one boxing in the case of the decaying public health system slash uh, rising rising rental market, and you being young. Okay, but because you've because you're Talking about uses, you talk. You necessarily bring in these contexts, right? Like um, uh, sickness or, uh, or 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 or, or uh, uh, youth and and social decay. Okay, so you bring in these contexts, and once you bring in these contexts, then um, it's not that you're a one boxer or a two boxer per se. It's that um, uh, given certain circumstances, you're a one boxer, and given certain circumstances, you're a two boxer. And because of the nature of the uh, Newcomb's, Newcomb's paradox, as I argued for in my first vlog, that means you can still hold it to be a contradiction. So you, you get out of uh, the embarrassment of uh, it being, of, of, of you having to choose between one boxing and two boxing. You go, well, hang on, if I, if I had to do it, I'd resolve the contradiction by, by reaching for, you know, what's the context, what's the utilities? And I think that that naive view a seemingly naive view that you encounter in people when you uh, when you hit them outside a university context with um, or a lot of people when you hit them with uh, with with, an, with a Newcomb's game um, is it's actually got a lot more to go, going for it than maybe a lot of philosophers realise and that a lot of uh, people who have to deal with everyday 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 problems uh, have got have got an insight that I think philosophers can tend to lose and. Um, you know, philosophers often are often there. Um, I'm not saying this is true of all philosophers, but a lot of, a lot of people get, get into philosophy because it's just a middle class job, and uh, they're beholden to a, a conservative institution, a university, for their livelihood. So they're, they're not going to question money, as I've been able to do as the punk philosopher, right? That's just that just wouldn't be generally acceptable there. Um, at, le at least not not in 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 in, in, in uh, the context of, of sort of uh, a, a lot of analytic philosophy anyway, um, or, 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 or many other contexts really. So, um, so, so the, the, then they, they, they uh, go with that. Now, I think if you're going to be a philosopher, you're either a real philosopher or you're, you're a fucking bullshit philosopher. Right? I think you're a real philosopher if you question anything. Anything can be questioned, um, and a lot of the things that philosophers can question because they can question anything uh, have been answered by uh, have been questioned and, and taken up more properly by say the sciences. Um, you know, Aristotle was into into everything except shit sandwiches, but as 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 philosophy and science developed, a lot of what he was into, like meteorology, became the not the prerogative of philosophy, but the prerogative of science. But philosophers can question, can question everything, and they should use that ability um, to 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 make the most ruthless criticisms of, of of everything that exists. Otherwise, they're not philosophers; they're just they're just middle class wankers, and they can go get fucked. Okay, thank you. I've been the punk philosopher, and I hope that answers the question the worry or the potential embarrassment around whether I would one or two box.